Hey, Cleaning Nation. This episode is a replay of one of our best performing podcasts ever. Everyone loves listening to this, so we thought we'd share it again in case some of you out there have not heard it. Hope you enjoy and on to the show. Hey, Cleaning Nation. Welcome to part two of how to get more cleaning contracts. Before we jump in, if you haven't listened to part one, go back and listen because almost everything we do now is going to be kind of built on the foundation we built in part one. I just broke it up because I don't want this big 30, 40, 50, 60 minute video. I wanted to make sure it was in little digestible chunks. Also, because this is uh, we're using this as for our podcast and I try to keep them under 20 minutes. So wherever you're going, if you've got a quick trip you're doing to a job, from a job, uh, to the office or back, you can listen to it. So that said, make sure if you haven't listened to part one, go back and listen to part one because a lot of this stuff won't make any sense and we're building on part one. That said, we'll do a quick summary. We talked about pre-framing, how important it was for your customers to know uh, where to, for you to know where your customers came from and what they know about you and what their mental state is when they, when they arrive. Step two, we talked about the phone call, how important that is, um, how to ask questions and listen and not try and vomit all the information and tell them everything you know. And the reason you're asking all those questions is so you can qualify or disqualify them. Obviously, they're going to call in and try and qualify you. But if you're going to invest an hour or two to go out, do an appointment, give a bid, it actually an hour or two just for the appointment and a couple hours to give a bid and go on, you have to decide if this is a worthwhile investment of your time we talk about how to do that. And then the third thing we covered are the ground rules. Before you go out, you've got to agree. Um, how long is it going to, are you going to be available? Will there be, um, will there be any interruptions? What's the decision-making process and what's the outcome of the, the call going to be when I come out there? What's going to happen when I leave? So those are all super important. And if you don't have those done, you can't cover what we're going to do today which is the on-site bid when you actually go out and do the, the, the walk the property with them and uh, the budget conversation and the actual bid that you're gonna give them. So all of these steps three, four, and five or the last half of the steps are really dependent on the first part. So let's jump right in. Uh, on site. So you had the call, you, you know where they came from, um, you set the ground rules, here's what you're going to do when you get on site. The first thing I always say, hey, Mr. Johnson, thank you so much for inviting me out today. So that's really key. There's a difference between, uh, hey, I'm excited to be here, we want to bid, blah, 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 and thank you for inviting me out today. So that really sets the foundation of you invited me. I'm not a salesperson, I'm not a door-to-door -door, you know, vacuum salesperson. You invited me out as a professional to give you a consult, I'm going to give you a consult. You might even say that, hey, thank you for inviting me out to give you a consultation today. So that's I start everyone that way. The second thing I do is go over the ground rules again, right? Uh, and if you remember from the last video, we talked about if this, if uh, for whatever reason you don't think we're fit, are you going to tell us? If for whatever reason I don't think you're a fit, do I have permission to tell you? What's the decision making process? I'm going to go over all that again. Hey, we had 30 minutes of uninterrupted time. Is that still the case? Because a lot of times what will happen between, and it depends, and I always try and set the appointment as quickly after the call as possible. If you have a really good call, you spend 20 minutes, you understand what's important to them, their decision making process, when they need to make a decision, why they're making it. You've got all that down and you set an appointment for a week in advance, it's all gone. They've slept since then, you forget, they forget, and you have to start all over. Not the end of the world, but not ideal. If you do it the next day, they're still generally on, on par, on point with where you left them. So whenever the appointment is, sometimes you're going to have to reframe the ground rules stronger than before, right? So you'd already agreed that there's going to be 45 minutes of uninterrupted time. And the first thing you do is, hey, Mike, I'm glad that you're here, but I've got a lot going on today. So this is what we need bid. Go ahead and handle that. And I'll see you in 25 minutes. Or I'll let me, you know, check with me before you're done. Right off the bat, you slow them down verbally. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm so sorry, Mr. Johnson. I misunderstood. Can I take a minute? You see how I'm slowing everything down? They're forced to either just walk away, in which case I'm going to walk, bid's over. I'm not interested in that. Or they're going to slow down and come, come with me. Oh my gosh, Mr. Johnson, I'm so sorry. I remember what we spoke on the phone the other day about having 45 minutes of uninterrupted time. I'm going to turn my phone off right, and I turn off right in front of them. I've, I've got nothing else to do but to give you my full attention for this next 45 minutes. But for me to do a good job giving you a responsible estimate on what we're going to do to maintain this facility, I'm going to need that 30 to 45, whatever you'd agree on that 45 minutes of uninterrupted time like we talked about before. If that's not possible, I, I really don't think I'm a good fit. And I, I will walk off a bid. If they violate the ground rules that we set on the call and refuse to give me that time, I'm done. Uh, I don't want them as a prospect and I certainly don't want them as a customer. Very rarely though, if I've set good ground rules when I remind them about that, did they not 
honor it. They'll usually they'll kind of jo- oh gosh yeah I forgot about that. You're right. Let's let's do that. Um, and you just have to be confident and willing to walk away. Willing to if they go listen Mike I'm sorry I know I told you that but I got to go I don't have time. Um, if you feel really good about it I would reschedule. Oh gosh Mr. Johnson. Uh, like I said, that's really imperative for me to do a good job and really get you what you need. I've got to be able to communicate with you and it's got to be uninterrupted. If now is not a good time, we can reschedule. Um, for me, I probably wouldn't do that unless you had a really good reason, like a medical emergency or something. Um, I would just say, Hey, I don't think we're going to be a fit and put them in the follow-up process, but you've got to be willing to, to kind of, this is the deal. We're going to do this together or not. Cause you're setting the tone, right? If you set the tone of, yeah, you tell me to jump and go here and go there. That's going to be a relationship for the whole rest of the thing. When he says, lower your price, do this. Or when you get the job, your people are this, your people are that. That's not the tone that you want. You want, you're helping him and, and he needs to be a part of that. Not you're kind of his slave and he's the master. So right off the bat, go back to the ground rules, insist that he or she honors his commitment or their commitment to have that uninterrupted time. Second part is you go, just so we're still clear, we talked about earlier, um, if for whatever reason, I'm not a good fit, you're going to tell me that's still the case, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. And I hate saying this because I feel silly, but if for whatever reason, we, I don't think we're a fit, you're still okay with me telling you, right? Yeah, absolutely. And what, what was it you wanted to have happen if, if neither, you know, if you thought I was a good fit and you thought, well, and then he's going to say, well, of course I want you to, I want you to get started, which is great. So you have to kind of redo that whole ground rules right over again, depending on how on track they are or not, you can go real slow or go real fast. So first thing is, Hey, Mr. Johnson, so glad you invited me out to give you a consult today. I'm glad to help real quick before we get started. Let's re go over those ground rules that we talked about just so we're on the same page. Boom, boom, boom. You hit them. And now you're set up for a really good conversation. The next part, once you do that, is what I like to call pain. Write this down. No pain equals no sale. If the guy doesn't have any pain, you are not going to sell anything. So you've got to talk about, so Mr. Johnson, why did you invite me out today? What's not working? And some of these questions you're going to go, oh, we did this on the phone. Yeah, that's right. And you've written all that stuff down so you know, so you've got a real head start. But assuming you didn't do that well or you forgot or whatever, I'm just going to give you the full kind of pain conversation. So what's not, thanks for inviting me out. What's not working today? Why did you invite me out to help? That's a great opening question. They're going to, they've got to answer. Well, they asked you out. They've given you 30 or 45 minutes of time. There's going to be a reason. The cleaner they've got knows good. They're doing it in house. It's not working. Uh, They found out the guy's cheating them, whatever the case may be. That's huge. And then you're going to just, this is so important with the ask questions and be quiet. This pain conversation itself might take 20 or 30 minutes, but if you don't get the pain, there is no sale. The trick is if you get massive pain, the sale just makes itself. And the cool thing is you're probably going to be the only one having this in depth of a conversation. So you don't even have to tell them how you can solve all that pain. If they just share with you, Oh, this and this, and this is where I'm at. They're going to assume that you can fix that pain and you're going to be the preferred vendor. So that conversation might look like what's not working. Why did you invite me out today? And I'll just pick something. um, I'll pick an easy one. Uh, our cleaning company, we gave them a 30 day notice or whatever the case they gave up, whatever the case in 30 days, we're out of a cleaning company just to make it simple. Tell me about that. Can you be specific? Give any examples. What, what happened? What, well, they didn't do a good job. Okay. I get that. They didn't do a good job. Why? What just be specific. I want to make sure I don't make that mistake. Tell me, can you give me an example of what they didn't do a good job of? And they'll go into that. The next question might be, um, why now? So what they just now been not doing a good job or is it taking a while? So that's a good one. Um, why us? You, did you call a bunch of people? Just us? What made you call us? And again, this goes back to the pre-framing we talked about in the first video is while well, I met you at a trade show, or we came to one of your events, or we've been getting your newsletter for six months. Those are all very helpful information. Hey, Clean Nation, Mike Campion here. One of my least favorite things about these podcasts are we found that people love the show and they love the information. But when I talk to you guys in person, stuff doesn't get done. People love the podcast, but they don't take any action. If you'd like to actually implement this and get this done in your world. We have a whole team of people that do exactly that. If you go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk, you can book a time with either myself personally or one of our teammates to at least help you come up with a plan to actually implement and change your life. So if you want to go from getting these good ideas in your head to getting them in your life, just book a free call with myself or my team, growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. And we can go from this one to mini format to one to one and really get you some results. Excited to talk. The next thing is um, who else? And again, this really depends on where your, your decision-making conversation has been. 
who else is this decision important to, right? Because this is another opportunity in case they haven't shared the real decision maker with you or that person's not there. Oh, well, John, this is important to John. Well, let's have John involved in this conversation. Because again, that's a bear when you go through all this work and everything's perfect and they say, oh, I would, I would hire you right now, but we got to get John. Well, let's get John now sooner than later. So a great question to ask if you say, who's the decision maker? They don't want to tell you because it, it's embarrassing to I'm the decision maker, right? So don't ask that question and say, who else is this important to? Who else cares about this decision? That's the way that they can feel safe and they'll share the decision maker, maker with you. You want to get that person involved as soon as possible. So, um, so what's not working? Why did you invite me out? Tell me about that. Do you have, do you have an example? Can you be more specific? Who else is this important to? Um, so how has this affected you? How long have you been dealing with this problem? And some of these questions you'll notice from part one, right? This is going to be a long extended eyeball to eyeball conversation around that. Um, what have you tried so far to fix it? That's a great one. What have you tried so far to fix it? Well, we yelled at them. We get notes. We did this. Great. That sounds like it should have worked. What happened? And you're trying to get them to really get in touch with the problem that they've got. Because when they first start and you come, they've got 32 other things and you're just the cleaning guy, right? They're not in touch with their pain or why it's important to them to make this decision. They're just like, I got to get this guy out of here because I got six other things to do today. The pain conversation gets all that crap out of there, gets them to really focus on this is costing me something and I want it fixed that's when you can help them. Until they've got that, there's not a lot you can do to help them because you just represent a dollar on their budget or a headache in terms of switching keys and whatever work it's going to take to get them, uh, get the old people out and the new people in. So this pain conversation is a lot of information around, tell me about that. Can you give me an example? How does it affect you personally? This is key. If you're dealing with the business owner, you can talk business. How's it, what is this costing your business, do you think? And let them talk about it. What's it costing you emotionally to have to deal with this and not, you've got other stuff you're trying to do. How is it costing you emotionally when you have to deal with the cleaning service as opposed to employees and getting new customers? I'm a business owner, so I know what that's about. Um, if it's not the business owner, this key question is how does that affect you? Per Even if it is the business owner, how does this affect you personally? So say it's a property manager. He's going to say, oh, well, these people aren't good and the, the clients aren't happy. Great. How does that affect you personally? Like, I get that that's not good for your job, but personally, what's that matter? Oh, well, I've known this client for a long time and he and I uh, have drinks on a personal level and I feel like I'm letting him down. See, do you have, see how that, that pain of I'm letting a friend down is so much greater than some customer I have is not happy. So make sure you take it to a personal level. Same with the business owner. Oh yeah, this is, how's this affecting you personally? Well, and then they'll always start with a business reason. So you have to be okay with that and then ask it again. How's this affecting you personally? Well, I'm spending too much time. You know, it's costing me 500 bucks a month. It should be 300 or they don't have insurance. I get that. But personally, what, how does it change your life, right? Because that's really all they care about. They only care about their business as it relates to them. So get it personal as quick as possible. How much is this costing you? What have you tried so far? How does that make you feel? That's a great one. How does that make you feel? Like, oh, the cleaning company said they're going to do this, but they're cheating me. Wow, how does that make you feel? I feel cheated. You see, they're not doing a good job is this level of pain. I feel cheated is way up here, right? So these are the things that you want to get to. So, and this takes practice, okay? Salespeople are not natural at this. So you're going to spend the next 20 or 30 minutes in a pain conversation, asking all the questions you can get to get their personal, this is why it's upsetting me and get them to understand this is a big deal. There's a lot of pain here. We need to get this fixed. It's the difference between, between going to the doctor and you've got sniffles and you've had the sniffles for six months and you're kind of living with it. And he says, great, take this pill. It's a thousand dollars and you're fixed. Not interested, right? Because you don't have any pain. But if you go to the doctor and your arm is hanging on by a tendon, I promise you, you haven't been dealing with it for six months and you'll pay a million dollars if you can take a pill to get it fixed. So pain is a key to the whole thing. No pain, no sale. So once you've reestablished the ground rules, you have agreed what's going to happen after you give the bid and you've got the decision making process and you've got his pain or her pain. And more importantly, they're in touch with their pain. You're going to kind of summarize the conversation. OK, so, Mr. Johnson, it sounds like this is a problem because your cleaners have quit. You've got somebody important coming in a month and a half from now. You're afraid that's not enough time to transition. And last time they came, you almost lost your job because whatever that may be, but you're going to summarize as much personal impact to them as you can. They're going to go, oh yeah, that's it. That's it. How important is this to get fixed? How committed are you to fix it? And this is where you're getting them to commit. Yeah, we're going to do something. This isn't just a conversation I'm having to waste your time and my time. I'm committed. We're going to get it fixed. Once you get that commitment, which is, e which is easy once you've got their budget, Oh my goodness, I'm getting so excited, which is easy. Once you get their commitment, which is easy once they've got their once you have got their pain, you're going to jump right into budget. So let me say that again so it's clear. Once you have got their pain, 
it is very easy to get a commitment and you need to get that commitment. So they say, not you say, they say, this is important. I need to get it taken care of soon. That's the commitment you're looking for. Once you've gone through pain, slam dunk, walk in the park. After you've gotten their pain and their their uh, commitment, you're going to go into budget. Now, this is huge. Most salespeople are afraid to talk about money. Maybe they've been raised that way. Maybe they're afraid to lose the sale, but there's all this mental stuff where they don't ever want to talk about budget. They just want to give the price and hope for the best. We're not going to do that. We're professionals. We're going to talk about budget at this point. This is the only time in the process you talk about it. If you talk about budget before pain, the budget's going to be down here. They don't have any pain, right? If I'm not aware that my arm's going to fall off tomorrow, and you, you know, my budget might be 50 bucks, but once we talk and you explain as a doctor, hey, this thing's gangrious and it's gonna literally fall off, my budget has just infinitely increased. So you've gotta get the pain first, then you get their real budget. No pain, no sale, no pain, no budget. So once you get the pain real well, then what's your budget to get this handled? And just ask them. And they'll usually either tell you, which is fantastic because that really helps you to, to put together a proposal that meets their budget, right? If they need a $1,000 solution, you don't want to give them a $2,000 solution. You don't want to give them a $300 solution. You want to give them something that's going to meet their budget. And also if they, you know, a lot of times they, they have a $2,000 need and a $1,000 uh, budget, that's a conversation you want to have now more than later. So they'll either give it to you, which is great, or they'll, and again, if you've done pain, nine times out of 10, they're going to give it to you. If you've not done pain right, they might say something like, oh, I can't share that. Funny enough, here's a little tip. Just say, I know you can't, but if you could, what would it be? 50-50, <laughs> they'll tell you just after saying that. It's crazy. Um, but again, I can't tell you that or um, I don't have a budget. And again, if you've done pain right, they just committed to you that this is painful, it's important to them, and they're going to fix it. And then when you ask, do you have a budget? It's really hard for them to go, I don't really have one because they just told you how important it is. So this is a great opportunity to get their budget and get over that hump. And again, not before, not after, this is when you do it. So once you've got their budget, once you've got their pain, then and only then do you do the site walk. And this is when everybody else is um, starting the process, right? They just come out and do a site walk. They don't, know, they don't know pain, they don't know budget, they don't know decision making process, they don't know anything. You've already got everything you need, so the bid is actually kind of just the end of a process that you already know what's going on. So then and only then do you do your site walk and then you leave. So we've, we've gone over pre-framing, we've gone over the call-in, we've gone over ground rules, we've gone over the on-site, we've gone over budget. The last thing you need to cover is the bid, right? So because, again, we're not going to spend that much time on it because you set it up right. This is the easiest part of the whole deal. So the only thing I'm going to say is you're finishing where other people start and make sure you have a good bid package. Don't do this napkin scribbled out 500 bucks and slide it across. Have a package, a template that has your insurance coverage on it. Your If you use a background check or drug checks, put that in there. If you have a, a badges that you use, a picture ID or, or whatever, put that in there. If you've got a guarantee, put that in there. In another, uh, in another blog, we talk about you know, having a consumer's guide to hiring a commercial or residential cleaner, seven things you must know before you hire a cleaning company. Um, I'll, I'll put a link up to that. So make sure that you have all those seven things in your bid package. So it's a big package and make sure that that package hits their pain. All that that pain went over, re, um, uh, retouch with that pain in the bid packet. So have a, a packet, have a template where it's got all your stuff, retouch all their pain in there, put that in. The last thing is, uh, so that's it. Once you give it, it should be done because you've already got the decision-making process. They've already agreed with you that you're fit and that there's no think it overs and you're going to retouch their pain. So you've pretty much done everything you need to do. That's it. That This video plus the last video is a fantastic way for you to get more cleaning, customers, commercial, residential, all of it. If you want even more resources, I'm going to put up a link right now where you can go to a webinar and we dive, we dive even deeper into the iceberg and, and your core values and all the other stuff that, that drive into this. So make sure you leave a comment. Let me know if you dug it. Uh, if you like this, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out our website, www.growmycleaningcompany.com and for sure re register for that webinar because it is. if you like this, you'll love that. I'll see you there. Hey, Cleaning Nation, if you dug the content you just got, we don't do any ads and I don't sell anything on this podcast, but if you would just subscribe, rate, and review, it would be huge and I'd be so appreciative. Not only is it going to help me, but you'll help other owners of cleaning companies across the world work less, make more, and get profitable. So if you appreciate the value we give, again, subscribe, rate, and review. It would mean the world to me. I'd really appreciate it. And we sure appreciate your time and attention.